When I was around six years of age, I moved to Alberta from British Columbia. Being that we didn't have a house, we lived in my grandparents' old place in one of the elder parts of town. As I was a new child in a huge place, and my school didn't start for a good three months, I didn't have many friends. Yet, I seemed to find one. After about a week of living in my grandparents' house, my mother noticed I was spending more time in my room downstairs than with other people. She told me later that she'd always find me in my room, talking to thin air. Often, I'd draw, as I was and still am artistic, but I would come back with these drawings of large black circles. When questioned, I'd say without skipping a beat, she drew them. After a while, as any parent would, my mother became worried. I'd spend more and more time in my room talking to my friend, who I affectionately referred to as she. My mother finally snapped after I'd come upstairs, asking for an extra cookie because she was still hungry. I remember that she'd been very angry, yelling at me that she wasn't real, and I needed to grow up and become an adult instead of wasting my time with something that didn't exist. The last thing I remember from that day was running down to my room in the basement in tears. I wasn't told the rest of the story until just recently, within the last year or two. Apparently, after about an hour after my mother had snapped at me, she had come downstairs to apologize. After all, I was only a child and in a brand new town. Naturally, I would make an imaginary friend. As she got close to my room, she said that she could hear a voice speaking, slightly higher than my own. She didn't catch most of the words and told me she heard, Okay, and I'll be here, for the most part. Thinking that it was just me talking to she again, she barged in, only to find me fast asleep. I myself don't actually remember any of this. I only remember running to my room and going straight into bed. My mother said she'd seen a shadow hovering above me, looking barely human, but appeared to be whispering in my ear. Almost as soon as she'd seen it, it vanished from sight. After that, my mother grabbed me and ran. In the next few weeks afterward, I began complaining that she was angry and had refused to play with me, saying that she said that she still likes me, but says that mommy and daddy are mean. Shortly thereafter, we moved out of that house. Now, nearly ten years later, I still visit that house. Nothing usually ever happens, but a recent occurrence brought me to submit the story. Roughly a week ago, I went to my grandparents' house again for a visit. My brother and I were trying to scare each other and jokingly, I said I'd go back into my old room. What scared me was what was on the bed. Lying on the pillow were the old pictures I had drawn with she, including ones that were nothing more than a large black circle. Normally, I wouldn't have been scared. However, my mother had burned all my old pictures that I had drawn. These were perfect, with not even a crumple. Obviously freaked out, I ran. I believe that she is still there, but I don't exactly know what it is. That's why I'm here asking. Any suggestions or theories would be extremely helpful. My grandma had been telling me that recently she's felt as though she was being watched and that someone had pushed her over the other day. I mostly just want to know what this thing is or was. If you can offer a suggestion, thank you. I don't know anything about demons. However, I have experienced some paranormal activity starting when I was a child. But my mother taught me that it was just a friendly spirit, not wanting to do any harm and she told me to ignore it. It wasn't until I was a lot older that I found out that her and her siblings had some scary experiences from fooling around with a Ouija board when they were children. My mom will not tell me about what happened. All she said was that her little brother was possessed, had an exorcism performed, lost most of his vision for a long time, but after much praying and getting blessed by a priest, he got his eyesight back. 
My mom has shared many stories of ghosts from her childhood, and her cousins and family all attest to this and I have drawn the conclusion from their stories that my grandmother, who died before I was born, had the ability to communicate with the non-living. My first experience was when I was six years old, eating my cereal at the kitchen table before school. My mom had packed lunches for my brother and I the night before and had set them on the counter that morning, ready to go as usual. I was just about to take a bite of my cereal, and my lunch pail went flying across the room. I was stunned for a few seconds, not knowing what to do or what to think. I then ran to my mom, crying, and she said not to worry about it, and she would explain it all to me later. She then told me it was a spirit who just wanted to get my attention, but told me to ignore it because I could make it unhappy since I am living and it is dead, and it would be mean to interact with it so I grew up feeling bad for this thing. Instead of being afraid every time something strange happened, doors opening and closing repetitively, knocking on the walls, loud footsteps running through the room, I could go on. I felt bad for it because all it wanted was attention, but giving it attention would be mean as I was taught. So I ignored it my entire life in hopes that it would move on and find a way to escape the in-between, limbo or being caught between heaven and earth. In high school, I started getting this odd feeling that someone was following me. This is where I get confused. I am not sure if what I saw was a demon or a spirit because it looked human, but I got this awful feeling that it wanted to kill me. It was this older man, maybe 50s or 60s, and he had very broad shoulders. He looked big, but not fat if that makes sense. He wore a black suit and a black top hat and he looked as though he never smiled a day in his life. He was always with me and followed me everywhere. For example, walking down the street I would see him up ahead like he was waiting for me. I would always catch him out of the corner of my eye and for the first year he would always disappear as soon as I turned and got a glance of him. But over time he just kept getting closer to me and he moved out of my peripheral and into my direct eyesight. I thought I was hallucinating at this time, but nonetheless it terrified me. After three years of this getting worse and worse with paranormal stuff still happening at home when I was in grade 11, December 27th, and I will always remember this day like it was yesterday, and I even wrote it down in my diary to keep it on record. I was in my bed just getting ready to fall asleep, but still awake, and then I felt the presence of someone in the hallway outside my door. I thought it was my mom coming to ask me a question, so I rolled over to look, and this man was standing in my doorway, glaring at me. His eyes showed excitement, but his face still looking like he has never once smiled. I noticed he was holding a large knife, and I instantly tried to scream as realization of what his intentions were set in. I couldn't make a single sound, and I couldn't move at all. Pressure was holding my entire body very still, and as I was panicking and freaking out on the inside, all I could do was watch him. He walks towards me, steadily and passionately like he was on a mission, and once he was standing over top of me he raised the knife above his head, and I was so terrified in this moment, I'm even crying now thinking about it. He stabbed the knife down into my chest, and though I felt no blade, I felt the impact of his fist slamming against my chest. It felt like a bowling ball was being dropped onto me. I couldn't breathe for about 10 seconds after that, and it felt like my chest was being crushed, but as soon as I felt impact, he disappeared and I was left alone gasping for air. As soon as I took my first breath in, I shot up straight and began screaming and crying. My mom ran to me and asked me what was wrong, but I told her it was just a nightmare. I couldn't sleep that night, but I never saw that man ever again after that. So what is the reason I am writing this? This voice in my head for the past three months has been telling me that I have a demon within me, that is trying to reach my soul. The voice is advising me to let it in and has demanded that I do so or else it will kill me. 
It explicitly told me to say to it, I know you're there. I know you've been with me the entire time. I did not let you have me because I was afraid. I am no longer afraid. I am yours for the taking. Welcome and enjoy. This voice is really scaring me. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I have no idea what to do or what to think. I never thought my experiences were paranormal, but this voice is telling me that my entire life has been a lie and that it was all a demon trying to find a way inside of me. I don't recognize this voice. It sounds like a man. Maybe I'm delusional, but I just thought I'd ask to see if this is possible. Can demons appear in human figures? Can they speak to you in your head? If not, I am delusional and I will speak to my doctor about this and hopefully get this resolved, but I'm just getting this really weird feeling that this voice is from the demon who is trying to get inside me. He keeps telling me to trust it. I know this sounds crazy and I would never believe anyone to be in the right state of mind if they told me anything like this, but this is happening to me and I don't know anything about this kind of stuff and I'm afraid that it's real. Before I start, I'd like to say that I have my own experience, my aunt's experience, and my mom's experience. This happened just last week on Thursday. You see, we live in a small town that is a reserve. I won't tell you the name though. It all started when my aunt Susie was on her way back from the airport after picking up my brother's telescope. She was riding on a Honda. It's a very small town, so we don't have to use cars. As she was driving, she saw something at the corner of her eye. She turned expecting it to be one of the young men taking a nature walk, but what she saw was something she didn't expect. It was a black figure. It looked to be a man, but all black, tall and wide, walking in broad daylight, and then disappeared. This happened somewhere around 3 p.m. in the afternoon. She wasn't scared, just curious. She stopped her Honda and stopped her uncle who was riding behind her on his own Honda. She asked him, did you see that? He gave her a puzzled look. See what? He rode past her up ahead. She was excited thinking that she may have saw a Bigfoot. She drove to the spot where she saw it to find that there were no tracks anywhere. That's when she realized that it was walking on the air and it wasn't that far from her so she could clearly see it. Later that evening, something tragic happened. A man named Matthew, my cousin, went canoeing with the new cop in the area. His name was Wilfred. They were just admiring nature until the motor stopped and the waves were coming in and flipped over the boat. Wilfred was telling Matthew to swim to the shore and that he'll be alright if he just hung on to the boat. Matthew swam to the shore and saw that the boat had sunk with Wilfred clinging onto it. This had happened around 1 a.m. in the morning. I also have a little experience myself. I woke up directly at 1 a.m. I felt really weird and uncomfortable. I was sleeping on a bed on top of the covers. I suddenly felt sore and cold. At first I thought it was my fan, but then I realized I always sleep with my fan on, so I decided to slip under the covers. My mother also had this strange feeling too, I could hear her walking around the house, still awake. She stated in the morning that she was freezing last night, which is something that she rarely feels, and that she couldn't sleep for a whole hour. To let you know, the temperature of the water at the river was freezing cold last night. In the next morning, we heard the news about Wilfred. My aunt told us about what she had seen on Thursday. We all believed it was a sign. My mother and I told her what we had been feeling that night. They are currently searching for Wilfred. It has been five days now and nobody has found him. We believe that his body had floated down to James Bay which is a very large bay. This is the last day they are searching for him. My plan is to go down the river to see if I can feel any ghostly presence. We all believe Wilfred has passed on.
When I was about 13, I had ran away from home and was staying with friends in Saskatoon. Now, I can't say they were good people, as they all had their problems, but for some reason they had befriended me and let me stay with them, amazing as they were all much older and could have gotten into a lot of trouble about that. Well, my best buddy in Street Brother was a guy called Sea Dog. He had just turned 18 and gotten out of juvie. He was the kind of guy who always had a smile on his rugged face no matter what and looked out for me like a big brother would. Now at this time everyone was on drugs and going crazy and I ended up getting picked up and put in a low security home for runaways. Not even three days later I saw the header in the local star Phoenix, three caught in kidnapping plot, two still sought. Well the two that they were looking for was Sea Dog and his girl Denny. Of course I took off looking for them to help get him out of town or whatever I could do. The first place I stopped was at the apartment which still had crime scene tape across the battered floor. It didn't take much to get it open and I went inside and retrieved my journal and the deck of tarot cards that had been a gift from Sea Dog. He of course wasn't there but as it happens I got picked up outside by a cop who recognized me and much to my surprise there in the back of the paddy wagon was Sea Dog on the other side of the divider. His trademark smile was missing and he looked incredibly sad as I assured him all would be well and I would visit. We didn't have long to talk, but in the time that we did, he told me what had happened and how he had walked in on a kidnapping in progress by the three friends and ended up being forced to stay. And now a long jail sentence was awaiting him. Well, they took him off to court and deposited me back at the home, and that would seem was that. But it wasn't. About four days later, I fell asleep to the sound of rain on my window and the doors singing Riders on the Storm, and suddenly I was transported outside of Sea Dog's prison cell, where he sat on a cot with a rope made from ripped and braided bedsheets hung from his hands. Tears were streaming down his cheeks, and I tried to comfort him, but he didn't see me until he had hung himself, and then it seemed he was looking right at me. I woke up and it was already morning, and I was kind of shook up about the dream, but didn't think much of it. Until about ten minutes later after I got up, a counselor came to my room saying I had a call. The call was from Charlotte, the planner of the whole kidnapping and now my ex-good friend. She asked if I had heard about Sea Dog, and I went off on her saying how could she, he was just sentenced to an incredibly long sentence in jail. She said, Honey, I think you should sit down, and then told me he had hung himself that night, the same night I had had the dream and couldn't save him. That screwed me up for a while, and honestly I ran away and can't remember what I did for the next four months touring Calgary and Edmonton. One day a wise woman told me I shouldn't feel guilty about it. If he had wanted to be saved, he would have seen me or sensed I was there and not done what he had. She told me it wasn't my fault. I had a bad experience about four years ago, but I think that I may have brought something with me when I went to that country where they worship demons, praying and giving them offerings so that they don't get troubled by them. I went to visit ancient sites when they had a lot of those worshipping hotels. I was kind of curious and I approached a lot of those. At times, I felt my ears were like blocking and couldn't hear properly. Afterward, I became weird and had bad thoughts, which was very unusual coming from me. After I returned home, I felt strange. I was seeing shadows out of the corner of my eyes. I surprised myself talking to it many times. One night my daughter woke up around 1am crying, just to tell me that she had had a bad dream that she saw me being sucked up by a black tornado. I was still on the internet searching for ghost and spiritual stuff and then I went to sleep. At exactly 3am I woke up from a nightmare. My heart was pounding like it was going to burst out of my chest. I never felt my heart so loudly pounding in my entire life. Then, suddenly, 
the TV turned on by itself. I was freaked out and told my husband about it. We woke up and then we were in total disbelief. Having not found any explanation to this, we went back to sleep. The following night, the same scenario. Nightmare. Woke up at exactly the same time, 3 a.m., heart pounding. TV turns on on its own, showing some worshipping temples. The same kind I saw in the country I visited. I prefer not to mention what country and what religion were the temples out of respect. The day before, I had tuned the television to that channel that has shows on spirituality. This time, my husband prayed in front of the television and then went back to bed. On the third night, I went through the whole thing again. Nightmare, opened my eyes, looked at the clock's red numbers, 3 a.m. At this point, I was angry. I called my husband up and said, that's enough. I wasn't afraid anymore. I was completely pissed off. I told my husband I brought it here, I'm the one who has to kick it out. A sudden strength fulfilled me and I started to pray loudly, claiming clearly that my family belonged to God and that I wanted him out of my life and that I wasn't afraid of him. I don't know why I felt it was a him. My whole body was trembling. I'm having goosebumps now as I write this and the TV started to turn on and off until it finally turned off for good. I never felt so strong in all my life. I was like a lioness protecting her territory and challenging an intruder. I never had problems after that when I stood up to it, but I was curious to know why 3 a.m. The weekend after my pastor told me the whole thing about the evil 3 a.m. hour and I was shocked. I am relieved to see that I am not the only one that this has occurred to, maybe differently, but still the same hour. I'm currently 15 and I'm a girl. In 2003, my family, sister, bro and parents moved into a new condo and we never really noticed anything wrong or unusual. Shortly after we moved in, my mom sent me to a boarding school in another country and I was 11. I came back when I was 13, so this is where weird stuff started to happen. When I came back, I felt awkward and very uncomfortable in my own room. I thought maybe because I haven't been in this room for two and a half years. Every night I would wake up hearing voices, like as if many people were having a conversation with each other. I thought it was the next door people so I would bang on the wall to see if they would shut up. The voices would also stop every time I got out of bed. I would look down the balcony to see if people were there because I could hear them because I live on the second floor and no one was ever there. While this lasted for about half a year, one night I was shaken awake and couldn't move and something was grabbing my right arm and shaking it. I was lying on my left side. It stopped in like 10 seconds and in the morning I looked and had a blue mark, the bruise you get when you get hit, shaped like a hand on my arm. After this incident, I started getting sleep paralysis, and while I would be paralyzed, I would feel pressure on my chest. Not just pressure, but I would feel a hand, like I could seriously make out where the fingers are and stuff on my chest. But in March 2008, I had a sleep paralysis episode like usual, and thought it's just stupid pressure on my chest, back pain and stuff, but this time it was different. I looked up at my bedside and saw something coming close to me. It was some human, and I looked back. I was in sleep paralysis so I could only move my eyes, and saw nothing, but then I felt a cold hand on my chest. I was wearing a long neck shirt so my neck area near the chest was bare. I felt the hand going up close to my chest, but then stopped. I freaked and told my mom who was sleeping with me because I have had sleep paralysis a lot and she was worried. I thought at least it didn't choke me but I believe I spoke too soon. In a few days from that incident, I had another sleep paralysis but this time it was rough. That thing grabbed my neck, choked me and I was helpless, couldn't move at all. When it let go, I ran to the bathroom, looked in the mirror to see if there were any marks. There weren't any but I was blue in my face and my neck was red. 
After that, I got choked a lot more and had sleep paralysis multiple times after that. My curiosity is if whether or not other people who have sleep paralysis have it in the same degree. I wake up and I'm paralyzed, and that pressure, choking, back pain, one of those things always happen. And once I'm finally free in just a few seconds, I'm paralyzed again and going through the same thing. Finally, my mother asked someone and they said it's a ghost and possibly an incubus. But if it was, it was forced to come and haunt me, meaning someone unleashed it to me to come and haunt me. He said that its goal is to have sex with me. He said since I've never felt him doing that, it means he has done it with me being in my sleep. He said he would help me get better, but it's been one month. And I felt a bit better, but yesterday I suffered the worst of these attacks. There was so much pain, my head was spinning and I said God's name. I'm half Indian, so I pray to a Hindu God. Nothing happened and then I remembered a prayer my mom tried to teach me. I only knew half of the first line. The prayer is a sick prayer to get rid of spirits and saying that God is my creator and will protect me as I believe and worship him. That worked. He let me go and I heard and felt him jump off of me. I could barely come to my senses. I was in horrible condition. My heart was beating fast. My head was spinning. I couldn't get enough strength to get up, but I had to because I knew that he would paralyze me again. Thirty seconds pass. My head stopped spinning and I ran inside to my mom and we called the guy who said it will help and he did a prayer over the phone and this morning the spirit tried to do the same. I kept saying the prayer and he would let me go and grab me again, but I would say the prayer, finally going back and forth. I got up and went outside. I seriously don't know what to do. I'm only 15. I don't want my mom to stress about me. I tried everything and I just can't get rid of him, and plus my body is a total mess. From all the attacks I've started to develop serious swelling and I'm not sure what to do about the additional weight. It's been about a year after I posted my problem and I have tried a lot of what you guys have suggested and it didn't really help at all but thanks for helping out. It got worse. I started to see a man when I'm having sleep paralysis. I was too concerned about my mother to tell her so I told my younger sister, who's 13. Shockingly, she has been seeing a very strange man walking around her bed at night as well. She said that this man was tall and bald, but she couldn't make out a face because it was dark, and that he would walk around her bed and stare at her, but she would just cover herself up with her blanket and go to sleep. I have no clue where she got the courage to sleep in that room. One day she saw me in her room in the corner. It was 6 to 6.30 a.m. so it was very bright in her room so she can see facial features and everything. She was very annoyed that I was in her room at 6 in the morning so she screamed at me. She then said I walked towards her bed and changed into the man that had been bothering her at night. She saw all the facial features. She said that the man had no eyes, looked like a white male and was bald. That was completely different from what I saw. The man that was helping us failed to make me better, so we finally decided that we were going to find someone close to us. The problem was that they were all fake and incredibly expensive. A few months later, the problem was still getting worse. My aunt referred to us to a man who heals people for no fee. We knew we had to give it a try. I went and what he told me shocked me. He described the man that was tormenting me for all these years perfectly the way I saw him. He told me that the spirit was after me the day I set foot at the boarding school. He said that the school was built on top of a graveyard and every person who stays at that school is bound to get ill and perish soon after. Curious to see if he was lying, I went to that boarding school during the spring break. I requested documents of the area and after a little struggle I got the documents and he was right. I also went through the records of the cemetery, to which I regret. I matched the spirit I had been seeing with the name, and it was all true. I finally knew I have found peace from all these years of pain. I am going through spiritual treatment, and if you recall what I previously said, I am overweight from increasing swelling. 
Well, I've lost over 36 pounds the first week of spiritual treatment, and the swelling has started to go down. He said it will take a while to undo the damage done to my body since the spirit was not an incubus, but he was a bad spirit who was sleeping with me and was basically living through me. The spirit has affected everyone in my family, and the man my sister had been seeing was him, shape-shifting. I've had many weird things happen to me in my life. This one happened only last Friday. I went to bed around 1am after watching a movie on television. I noticed it had started to snow. It wasn't heavy snow but wet and it melted as it touched the ground. I woke up in the middle of the night because I felt cold. I glanced at the bedside clock but it was off. It was really dark in the room and I noticed that even my nightlight in the ensuite was off. I got up to check outside and by that time there was quite a bit of snow. All the electricity was off in our house and in the neighborhood, no street lights either. With the snow it was bright enough to see my way around in the dark. I went back to bed and I was lying there thinking how strange it must be if we had no electricity as we relied on it so much and also wondered how long it had been as it was getting chilly. I was lying there when I noticed that there was a strange brightness, a bluish light of some kind coming from the hallway. There was nothing at the end of the hallway but a mirror at the end. As I watched it, it got brighter and then slowly dimmed and disappeared. I thought maybe it was a reflection from across the street at the neighbor's as his driveway was facing our window. I went downstairs to check and the truck was still sitting in his driveway with the headlights facing towards the garage door. Also the window had wood shutter blinds and they were closed. If there was a light from his truck, it would be red because of the tail lights. I have no explanation as to what the source of this light was. It seemed to come out of the end of the hallway and looked similar to the kind of light when a TV is on in another room and the house is dark. But my husband was sleeping my younger son slept in the basement bedroom and the older one was staying over at a friend's house. I have never seen a light like that before and I wonder if anyone else had seen something similar or maybe can give me an explanation. From what my neighbor told me the lights were out for about two hours and came back on around 4.30 or so. Except for the light in my bedroom from outside there was absolutely no way any light could reach the hallway. It seemed like it was only a few seconds, starting out as weak and got really bright and faded. My husband thought maybe it was from the smoke alarm, but it's connected to the electrical power and has no backup battery. Why would a smoke alarm shine anyways? I am not sure if it was electrical as there was no electricity so his explanation makes no sense. I did have another weird experience involving lights about a month ago though. It was late in the evening and I was working late on my computer. The stupid thing started acting really weird as if it had a life of its own, opening and closing programs, etc. I checked the program I used to see if anyone was trying to hack in or something and everything seemed okay. Then the lights in the office started flickering. I thought maybe because it was a bit windy outside and caused problems with power or something. As I was thinking that, the light started to dim and brighten. It did this three times. I don't have a dimmer switch and the bulb is a neon bulb. It was as if someone was trying to get my attention or something, but there was no one in the room and I could see the wall switch from where I was sitting. I went down to the basement where my son was watching television and asked him if the lights were flickering or anything. He said no. Apparently it was only in my office. I have never heard of a power surge in only one room. We have lived in this house for 16 years. We are the second owners and as far as I know no one has died here and it's only about 27 years old. But from day one I have had weird stuff happen, both to myself and to my children. Hubby naturally blames everything on the wind. Inside the house with all the windows closed in the dead of winter though, it seems a bit strange. The blue light was like when someone opens a door at the end of the hallway and the light shines. Then when they close the door, it fades. No door. 
Only a large mirror in the length of that hall from my bedroom door is only about five feet to the wall. Any explanation would be greatly appreciated. Please forgive this account seems disjointed at times. This is the gist of what has happened to me during the last 13 years. During this time I have experienced various occurrences which I believe all stem from the same source. I don't think I've heard a story quite like mine yet. I'm unsure of what this entity actually is, but sexual events have occurred. As unbelievable as some of these events may sound, I swear that the following account is entirely true. I don't really care if not everyone believes it, but sincerely I hope that it will at least get the chance to be heard. It all started when I was around 12. My group of friends decided to do a spell that would supposedly reveal your soulmate in your dreams. It only involved drinking a particular mixture and putting a certain something under your pillow, which seemed harmless enough. It was just for fun. Nobody actually believed that it was real. It was just something done on the schoolgirl's whim. I actually ended up doing it a few times, and it didn't even work some of those times. The first incident occurred one day while daydreaming. This was probably at least a month after doing the spell. I'm pretty sure this will be unbelievable to most, and I'm sure I wouldn't believe it either. At the risk of being ridiculed, I'll proceed. In my dream, I dreamt that a vampire was biting my wrist. At that moment, I actually felt it happened. I immediately woke up to find two puncture wounds in the exact same spot. It didn't feel like I was actually being bitten. It was really strange and indescribable feeling. To me, the most similar feeling would be the recoil felt after using a stapler. The only thing I felt was the feeling of the puncture wound. No teeth, nothing. The wounds never bled, and they ended up healing after only one day, which is unusually fast for me. After that, I started to feel a presence around me. When I went to bed, it felt like something heavy was pressing against my stomach. My dreams didn't feel like my own anymore. Gradually, it started touching me more and more until the point where it regularly went down on me every night. I thought it was just my imagination at first, but I knew it was real after my underwear started getting ripped in that area, which happened gradually. When it touches me, it's a warm, gentle feeling, almost like when a part of your body starts to fall asleep, except pleasant, and with your senses retained a warm chill, a lingering touch. It has never felt like an actual person was touching me. It never feels that real. After a while, it started taking me out of my body. I would be lying in bed, and it would start putting pressure in the third eye area. Eventually, I would feel myself come out of my body and I would see and experience things that seemed real. Not just sex, which is one of the reasons I'm not entirely sure what to classify this thing is, but I digress. Eventually, I would have unprompted out-of-body experiences during the daytime, alone. They were always short and triggered when I had any strong emotions. At this point, I was unsure whether I had multiple entities around me or just one. The experiences I was going through seemed to be conflicting in nature, and I was understandably confused. In reality, the entity seemed to be gentle and caring. When I saw it in dreams, the imagery became more and more disturbing, and the thing I saw in there seemed downright malevolent. I'm sure they weren't just dreams, since I would wake up from these dreams being touched or grabbed in the same areas. I didn't have those pleasant, assisted out-of-body experiences anymore. At this time, it would normally happen right before I would wake up, as opposed to before when it occurred before I went to sleep. The biggest difference, though, was that I didn't have any free will here. It was almost as if I were in a drug-induced state. It felt really hazy. I could feel what was happening to me, but I had no control over what I did or said. Most of these dreams entailed something attacking me while I struggled to wake up. The negative energy was overwhelming. I would try to call out, but my lungs would seemingly be paralyzed. It was a horrible feeling. Those attacks weren't sexual most of the time. They mainly involved squeezing my head, pushing my face down, 
plugging my ears, holding me down, and other unpleasantness. The worst part was always the negative energy it was giving off. It seemed so angry and hateful. Sometimes I would call for God to help me, and nothing would happen. I would try to shout it, but I could only think it. I would try to cast it out in the name of God, but I did manage to say it, and nothing would happen. I do remember that it even mocked me a few times. I do admit, though, I'm not a Christian. I do believe in God, though. Nonetheless, I surrounded myself with Catholic paraphernalia, rosaries, charms, etc., but to no avail. Still, I prayed about it every night. During the day, I still had those unassisted out-of-body experiences I mentioned before, only this time they lasted longer. I actually had conversations in the state. I didn't realize that until a friend mentioned things I had no recollection of saying. While I was out, it always seemed as short as before. I confided to a few of my friends about what was happening, and the one above mentioned that my eyes did seem different during the conversation. At this time, I was becoming extremely depressed. I tried getting help on the internet, from so-called psychics and others, but only received conflicting information. I didn't dare tell anyone in real life save for a few friends who did the same spell I did. None of them had the same experience. I honestly don't know why, but eventually the unpleasant attacks described above stopped. I still have unpleasant dreams sometime, but they're not like the above. The ones now mainly involve unpleasant, obscene subject matter that I really wouldn't choose to think about but at least they don't make me feel afraid or hopeless like the other ones did. I was always curious about what the entity was, the one that seemed good, but even now I have never successfully communicated with it. I tried several things, but it seems to be unresponsive. I don't even know its name, and that's after 13 years. I've only felt its emotions while it was nearby during my unassisted out-of-body experiences. Sometimes it seemed caring, other times, pretty ruthless. I think I saw the good one once. During one of my daytime out-of-body experiences, I saw a bright white humanoid form. I was so shocked I felt like I could have had a heart attack, and I never saw its form again. Throughout 13 years, the good one has always stayed with me, the one that felt warm and gentle. Every night since it came, and even now, it has always hugged me while I fell asleep. During the day, it always holds my hand, touches my hair, gives me a kiss or does something else non-sexual to let its presence be known. I was a virgin before this started, and I'm still a virgin even now, and waiting for marriage. In reality, it would only go down on me, but in dreams it went way further. In reality, I do get aroused, but it never goes very far. I never feel like my energy is being drained, or that anything else bad is happening to me afterwards. I'll admit that I enjoy it, but I don't enjoy the dreams I've described in more detail previously. The dreams always have perverse elements. Things were pretty frequent at first, but the frequency went down over the years. Now, something sexual happens probably once a week or less, and it's mainly when I'm dreaming. For this reason, I'm really unsure about what this thing is. I did have a three-year relationship with someone while it was here, and it never acted any different during that time. The other reason I'm unsure is, this one has done a lot of good things for me over the years. I used to get really bad cramps during my period, but for the first little while, I would feel it touching my stomach, and I wouldn't have cramps. Another notable incident was when I was in my last year of high school, and I had provincial exams the next day. These were serious, they made up around 50% of your mark, and you couldn't pass your course if you didn't pass this test. Unfortunately for me, I ended up developing a fever the day before my exams. I felt horrible, and I was so worried about what was going to happen. The entire night I felt it pressing against my head, like it was drawing something out from me. The next day I was completely fine, and I did great on my exams. The last notable incident was when I was walking down my stairs. I had an out-of-body experience while I was still walking and I was about to fall down the stairs. I felt an arm grab me while I was out and didn't end up falling. 
I got pretty sick and tired of all the confusing things that were happening to me. So about five years ago, I decided I would just do my best to ignore it. As a result, it does interact with me less, but it's still there. I also spontaneously go out of my body by myself a lot less as well, but it still happens. I honestly would like to communicate with it at least once, since there are so many things I want to know. I've tried automatic writing, leaving it open letters, talking to it, etc., but it never responds. In dreams, I can't control what I say, and it just tells me conflicting nonsense. If anyone has any ideas, what would be best to try or not try? I really would like some insight on my situation, which is why I decided to share my story. The main things I'm wondering are why is it still here? What is it? Did all of these experiences just come from one thing, or have I been in contact with many? What should I do? Has anyone else experienced something like this and not just one facet? If anyone has any suggestions or thoughts, please let me know.